I'm Alec Hoskins, this is Chasing Cars, and for the next six months, I'll be running around in this GWM Ute Canon X. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room. Who the hell is this guy? Well, for the past three years, I've been behind the camera, involved in creating all the content you guys watch on our YouTube channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna introduce you to my new long-termer, a couple of things I like about it, a couple of things I don't, and what my plans are for the next six months. So why have I got myself into this 40-ish thousand dollar top spec GWM Ute Canon X? Well, dual cabs fit my lifestyle pretty well outside of chasing cars, dragging race cars around on trailers and filling the tub with more wheels, tyres and jerry cans full of E85 than I can point a stick at. So the GWM Ute has been super popular with you guys on our YouTube channel and it's been a smash hit in the Aussie sales charts last year. And in the next six months, we're gonna find out if this budget bus is too good to be true. Starting off with a couple of things I like about this budget bruiser. Firstly, it's one of the safest dual cabs on the road, being one of very few to receive five stars in ANCAP's current testing protocol. So the GWM Ute has keyless entry as standard across the range. Only problem with that is half the time, it doesn't work. Look at this interior. A smidge over 40 grand and look at just how well appointed we are here. We've got a leather steering wheel, leather seats in the front and back, quilted leather on the doors, and power adjust for both front seats, as well as wireless charging pad. And that leads me to a couple of things I don't love about this Ute. Starting with some of the poor integration of tech in here. If I've got Lane Keep Assist enabled, which turns on every time you start the car, I can't access the trip computer or anything else in this digital dash. So if I want to say trip computer, fuel consumption, anything like that, I have to go into the safety settings menu, wait for it to load, and turn off lane support and lane keeping assist. Then I get my trip computer back, but then lane keep isn't enabled. So you can't have both, which is a little bit frustrating. Something else I don't like while sitting in the driver's seat is because of this huge bus steering wheel and where the air vents are placed, you can't actually feel any aircon blowing on your face on a hot summer's day, regardless of how high the fan speed is. The steering wheel blocks all the air. Now, whilst I spend most of my time in this car up in that front seat, it's hard to look past just how good this rear seat is. I've got stacks of room back here behind my own driving position at six foot two. I've got mat pockets on both seats. We've got a full leather bench. We've got a flip down armrest with leather. We've got air vents. We've got 220 volt and we've got a USB port. The only thing that is a bit strange is there's no rear dome light back here. So those are my first impressions of my new long termer. Over the next six months, we're gonna put this thing through its paces to see if it can cut the mustard and compete with the rest of the dual cabs in this segment. We're gonna take it to the outback for a week's worth of corrugations, and we're gonna tow my 86 race car to Winton and back on a 1400 kilometer round trip to see what it's like with a bit of weight behind it. But we wanna know what you wanna see, so if you've got any questions, recommendations, or ideas, be sure to leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars. <laughs>